Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Cody God's Nuggets of Truth. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in with me. I'm excited about what the Lord has for us today. We're here to just learn at his feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we will be talking about how good, good, right, can be an enemy of God. And um, I'm just really excited to share what the Lord has laid in my heart concerning this topic. We know that um, if you go to the, if you go to the streets and you ask most people if they think they're a good person, most people are going to say yeah, they think they are, they think they qualify for heaven. Um, but we want to talk about how good, right? Good can be an enemy of God, even though we know that God is a good God. All right, praise the name of the Lord. And but before we jump right into the word, we're going to take a minute or two to just honor the name of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to worship him in a minute or two. Even if you don't know the song, that's okay. Just bask in his presence. Praise the name of the Lord. Just speak to him from your heart as you just enjoy the music in God's presence. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Calvary. Oh, what it means to me since Jesus set me free, hanging on Calvary. Jesus' blood, oh, what a cleansing blood. He did it all for me on Calvary. Calvary, oh, what it means to us since Jesus said us free. Hanging on Calvary, my Jesus, Jesus' blood. Oh, what a cleansing blood. He did it all for you on Calvary. Jesus, we're just here to honor you. We're here to honor you for what you did for us on Calvary. We're here humbling in your presence, Lord, because you deserve it all. You deserve all of us. We're here to just reverence you, acknowledge you, that you are God. You are God, the only one who could die for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. We honor your name today. We praise you. We exalt you. We glorify you. You are God. You rule and you reign in the majesty of your power. There is no one like you. You alone are God. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. We reverence you. I say, Lord, have your way today. Have your way in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. In this word, oh God, let it be your very own words, oh God. Let flesh diminish in your presence, that you be glorified. I pray, oh Lord, that you speak to the heart of the hero, oh God. And Lord, that we will not leave your presence the same, oh God. That we will not leave this gathering. Actually, Lord, we want to take your presence with us wherever we go, but we want your word to convict our hearts and draw us closer to you and cause us to align with your will. Be glorified in all of those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So like I said, today we will be sharing on how good can be an enemy of God. The first reference we're going to make is to the story of Adam, um, Adam and Eve in the, in, the, in the Bible, right? We know that um, when God created um, Adam and Eve and he uh, created the, the, the Garden of Eden, he, 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 the Bible says that he, in, from the ground came forth the tree of the knowledge, many trees, including the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and also the tree of life. And we know that this particular tree, the tree of, not, of the knowledge of good and evil, God had warned Adam and Eve not to tamper with. Okay, so I'm just going to read the scripture really quick. It says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat out of it, you will certainly die. Hallelujah. Now you may say, you may wonder, I mean, when I, when I first uh, become a Christian, I, I would wonder, like, why did the Lord even put it there? Right? Why did the Lord put it there knowing that it had evil? But that's a whole story uh, for another day. Right? One thing I can say, just I can just say right away is that God wants us to choose him. So he, he, he created a garden where they had to choose. It wasn't just like, okay, I've created you, you're a robot, just serve me, just love me by force. No, he put an alternative there for them to, to decide. Are they going to go with him? Are they going to are they gonna honor him and obey him and listen to what he says? He has said to them, or were they going to just make a different choice? And sadly, we know the story. They did make a different choice. But that's not really what our focus is on. Our focus is on how good can be an enemy of God. So we, we can see from the story that clearly that Adam and Eve choosing the truth, they are uh, going with the enemy's voice. The serpent came and tempted them and made them go ahead and eat that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And we see how enmity um, got stared up. That's how it got started. The whole the problem started with that. Now, even though we think of that tree, we think about it as evil, but remember the Bible says it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, but then you begin to wonder if you're like me, you, you may wonder in your mind, like, okay, what, why were they, first of all, why were the two, the, why was it combined? Why was it called the tree of good and evil? And secondly, why did they even get in trouble for eating at least part of it, right? There was good, some kind of good in that, you know, alongside the evil. And we're going to delve more into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to know is that God, um, any, let's, let's just say this, any good that would displace God in our lives is abhorrent to him. Any good that would, any kind of good, just have that in mind the whole time we're going to go through this lesson. Any good that would displace God in our lives is abhorrent to him. And that's exactly what happened with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Immediately they chose to eat that tree. It was that it had some good in it, but it displaced God's authority. It displaced them obeying God. It displaced I and mean, automatically um, it displaced God in their lives. And we see practically because they were driven out of that garden of Eden and started to fend for themselves. We know that God extended grace afterwards, but they chose, they chose, they chose this other tree. And if we read further down that scripture, it says it was, they saw that it was good for food, it was good to the eyes, and it was going to give them wisdom. And these were some of the things that Satan, through the serpent, had said to them. So this, even though there was good in that tree, some kind of good, it was a good that was outside of God, outside of the will of God. Because he already made it clear what his will was, right? So it was a, a, a good they chose outside of the will of God. And we'll see how that's still a ripple effect even now. People choose a certain kind of good that's outside of God. That good that's outside of God displaces God, is dishonorable to God, and separates us from God. And that's the good that's an enemy of God. A good that's outside of the will of God. And outside of God. There's a scripture that says your righteousness are like filthy rags. He says your righteousness are like filthy rags. Well, let's see if we can read the entire thing. It's in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. I'm going to make you, allow you give you a minute to turn if you have your Bible uh, while I pull that scripture real quick. So Isaiah 64 verse 6. It says, All of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts our filthy rags, rags, all our good works, all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all shrivel, shrivel up like a leaf, like the wind our sins sweep us away. So we can't be, there's no, there's no goodness in man. It's adulterated. It's perverted. It might look good. It, it kind of, you know, will look good in some way. But any goodness that we're trying to attain or hold on to that's outside of Christ 
The Bible calls it filthy rags. It's, it's nonsense. It's not accept, acceptable to God. Another scripture in Ephesians 2 verse 8 says that we're not saved by works. We're not saved by good works. We cannot be saved by good works, but we're saved by the grace of God. Okay, let's turn really quick to Ephesians 2. I'm going to read 8 through uh, 10 thereabout. Ephesians 2. Give me a minute here. Pull mine as you pull yours. Okay. So let's see. So it says, For it's by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now we're going to talk about the, the later part of that scripture along the line where it says we're created uh, we're God's masterpiece or God's workmanship created in Christ to do good work. So we'll address that part later. But let's talk about this the beginning part of it, the verse 8 where it says, for it's by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from ourselves. It's the gift of God. Hallelujah. So we 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 don't have any goodness in us, right? I mean, just look at it. Adam and Eve, they chose the good and evil. Is that a good that's going to save them? It's tied along with evil. I say this, and, or, or I say this, and this is even an issue to talk about because, like I said, if you go and interview a couple of people on the streets, they're going to feel, people are going to give you feedback and you're going to see that people have some kind of confidence that they're good and that qualifies them to go to heaven. They're good because they're good people. They go to work. They're not looking for trouble with their neighbors. They're not, they're, they don't steal. They're not walking around with a knife trying to hurt anybody or a gun. Most people are going to say that. They pay their taxes. They do the right things. They're good citizens. Does that make sense? So many times people feel... Um, they feel a, a sense of um, there's there's a sense of there's this confidence that people have that they're okay, okay. And then we've read some scriptures already that have pointed us pointed out uh, to out to us that our righteousness is, are like filthy rags. We we're not we can't be saved by our good works. God is not impressed with our good works. When He put the garden when He put the tree of good and evil in the garden there he knew exactly what he was he knew what he was doing we, the adam and eve couldn't were not saved in fact it was the total opposite they were lost because they went with that pathway of the good and evil versus listening to the voice of god and it's the same thing we know that that voice of god now has come in the person of christ so in no shape or form will we being a good person, being a nice person, those are good things. Earthly, people around us can benefit. The community can benefit. A nation or, you know, people around us, our state, our nation, they can all benefit from us being good people. But in the eyes of God, the Bible says those are like filthy rags. It's like, it's trash, pretty much. Another scripture in Romans 3, I'm going to read 22 to, through 26 just to give us uh, good enough insight. It says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the bottom line of that scripture, but let's read, let's just read the whole thing. Romans 3, 22 through 26. And you take this minute to, to turn to yours as well. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's see. So verse 22 says, the righteousness this righteousness is given through faith in Christ Jesus to all who believe. There is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. For all have sinned. See, that's where that scripture comes from, verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and, and all are justified freely by his grace. It's going on to talk about the redemption there. But the first thing I want to point out is that all have sinned. We all sinned. Okay. So there's no way our goodness, we're all sinned. We, we sinned because Adam and Eve sadly fell. They fell to the temptation of the enemy. They listened to the serpent and they chose good and evil for natural reasons because they went with their senses. They went with their flesh versus the voice of God. So that disqualified them. And, and we, our children, we came from Adam and Eve, right? So it disqualified all of us. 
So even till today, people are still trying to attain perfection by, so to say, eating from, from the, tr by producing fruit from that tree of good and evil. So some people are choosing that good still. Remember, it was, a, it was together, the good and the evil. So people want to still attain, they want to get to God, they want to feel confident about their salvation and their righteousness, still from that tr fallen tree of good and evil. And we know, like we said, we know that that displeased God so much that he cut them off the Garden of Eden. He had told them the way. He had told them the way. He says, the way is to stay with me. Stay with what I told you. Stay here. You will eat the tree of life. Stay with me. Listen to me. Don't pay attention to this tree. I know it's there. I know it's there. I have a reason why I allowed it there. Because I want you to choose. I want you to give, the, give you the freedom to choose me. Okay, so like I said, Adam and Eve chose that tree. And we, when people want to uh, feel confident or just rest in their goodness, they are still partaking of that tree of the good and evil because we know that no one is perfect. No, there's, the Bible says no, not one is righteous. Because even though you feel like you're trying to be good, you're a good person in your strength by, from your nature, there's a lot of evil. And besides, we, there's no shape or form, there's no way we can compare our, our righteousness with how, holy, with how holy and perfect God is. In fact, the closer I've walked with the Lord, I've seen that we don't measure up at all, at all. You know, the, I found that the, the closer you walk with the Lord, the more he shows you how holy he is. You begin to discern, you begin to understand how holy he is, you begin to see how unqualified you are and how filthy you are and how we, we can't even measure up. Right? Let alone the person who hasn't even accepted him. So you accept Christ, and then you begin to even see how holy, you begin to understand how holy God is, how perfect, how impeccable, how his ways are so different from our ways. I'm telling you, thought by thought, second by second, our actions, our thoughts, there's so many things that we think are okay. Uh, and in the world, those things are acceptable. But in the sight of God, those things are despicable. So there's, in no shape or form can we make it. We can't make it on our own. So the person who claims that um, they're a good person, you're falling short in so many ways, you have no clue. In fact, you only begin to realize it when you accepted Christ and you start walking really close with the Lord. You now see, even though you're walking so close and you think you're even now, by the grace of God, you're doing so many things right, you see how, you, because you, you begin to see who God is, you see how much you fall short. So just, like I said, just compare that with somebody who, who hasn't even accept, accepted the grace of God, accepted Jesus into their hearts. Another thing I want us to look at is, yeah, another point I want us to um, just talk about, I want to share on is, any goodness outside of God will not lead to life, even though it may be beneficial at the moment. Like I had briefly mentioned, you know, it will not, it can't, it will not, for the, some of the reasons already enlisted. Granted, the people around you may benefit, you know, your neighbor will benefit, the people in your community will benefit that you're not vandalizing their building and, and doing all these bad things and, and their children can feel safe in the park. But it, it can't, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it, it, you are, it means nothing before God. It means absolutely nothing before God. Like I already explained, because there's that, there's that mixture, even if you're good, in three, four things, you're imperfect by God's standards. By God's standards of holiness, you you fall short so much. You fall short so much. Another thing there is many times the things that we as humans interpret as good or righteous in our sensual. I mean, how do you even? How do you even? How do you even? Um, what's the standard, humanly speaking? What's the standard? Okay, these days people call good evil. Who, who draws the line? Who, what's the standard, right? People make a god of themselves. They make a, a god of their ideologies, right? And, and, and what's the standard? Okay, so if I say whatever makes me feel pleased, if it makes me feel pleased to abort my baby, God forbid, it, it, because I'm trying to preserve my life and preserve my future and I, I need to go to college and all that. Now I've drawn a, I've, I've made a, I've made a God of myself. And for some people, that's how they would define good. And so many examples we can give. How do, how do you draw the line? You see why we fall short so much? 
what you may define as good is will can be absolutely disgusting to God. So we're in a world today that people want to they define it by whatever makes me happy is a good thing. As I'm good because this makes me happy. You you define goodness by your flesh, by how it how you or either by how it suits you or what you think is the common commonality. The Bible lets us know that Satan is the god of this world. So if you go by the world standard, so you're saying by world standards, whatever people most people accept as good, then it's good. Have you do we have we care to ask what God's perspective is? I'm telling you, many things we think are good and we think we are, are okay. God is not okay with it. Even if you, for example, if somebody people go and they do a, a hot dog contest, and how many hot dogs can they eat in? maybe three minutes or, or whatever that contest is. Do you know how abominable that is to God? How disgusting that is? You're wallowing in gluttony. What's the spirit behind that competition? So I'm just giving you some, some other things. What's the spirit behind that competition? And I can go on and on and on. Or even, you know, so many different things. It might be the, even the dressing, so many different things. How, so, if we don't go by God's standard of righteousness, then we're going to just create gods for ourselves. And, 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 and that's what we see. We're in the end times, right? People just, people, people just say, define, they just to define their own, what goodness make, means to them. Or if it's popular. Or if the, the, the Hollywood stars say this is good. Same thing for music, right? There's all, all sorts of filthiness out there. And but in someone's mind, they're a good person. They don't even think about it. And I, we can say things upon things upon things. May the Lord help us. Okay. So we need to be very careful how we define goodness. We fall short. That's the point I'm trying to make. We fall short. We can never attain goodness by our, by from our kind of fallen nature. Okay. And we're gonna see what's the solution to this. Now another main, another point I want to point out another point I want to bring out here is that Satan is okay with good as long as it displaces God. Now so sometimes good might actually be kind of good, you know, kind of good. Like if you're if you're if, let's say you do charitable acts, you go to the homeless or you go and see people in the hospital, you know, Satan is okay with that if it makes you feel self righteous. If you do those good acts or you take care of animals, if you do that and you're self-satisfied that you've done your good act for the day or you're a good person because you've done some of those things I mentioned, but you're doing it outside of God. You're just you're just doing it to make yourself feel good. People donate in their communities. There's a, a run for something, a cause, you know, you know, um, breast cancer or something. People make donations. They they have they feel good. They feel like they're good people. Now, if that takes the place in your heart and makes you feel I'm good, I don't need God. I'm a good person. It's sad, and that's exactly where Satan wants you to be. He wants that goodness that would displace God in your life, make you feel like you're okay. But remember what we talked about. That goodness, the Bible says, is filthy rags. Rags. Those works outside of Christ. Uh, the Bible calls it filthy rags. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible calls it filthy rags. So we need to be really mindful. We really need to. We need to be really mindful. Hallelujah! 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 So now, just just to put a cap on this, why is this whole why is this whole thing important? That's the question. Why is this important to even talk about? I believe by now this should, this should be pretty clear. We cannot attain righteousness outside of Christ. We read in one of the scriptures, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God knew exactly what he was saying when he said that. When Adam and Eve fell, they chose that tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil and and they got separated from God. So did all of the all of us, all their children. That's all of us that came after that. So I don't. It doesn't matter what we think of ourselves or how many charitable acts we do, 
or how much of a decent person we are. We got our education. We're not hurting anybody. We go, we, we just we go to work. We just do our thing. We respect ourselves. The Bible says it's filthy rats. Okay, so you can you can choose to glory in in in, in that, but we're just making fools of ourselves. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the scripture I read in Romans 3, 20, I was reading from 22 through 26. He says the, the righteousness is given through faith in Christ Jesus. That's the only way we can attain righteousness. That's the only way we can be qualified to stand in God's presence. He says to all who believe, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And we're justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of blood to be received by faith. Jesus shed his blood for us to bring us back to the Father. The same with the way Adam and Eve were escorted out of the Garden of Eden and the cherubim for the flaming sword so they couldn't go back. Jesus, when as he died on the cross, the song I sung, I sang at the beginning and spread out his arm on that cross. That's that invitation back to the Father. That's like him escorting us back to the Father. That's His blood is the only one that qualifies us. It's the only thing that qualifies us to come back into the Father's presence. Not our righteousness. We have no righteousness. The righteousness we've had, we have outside of Christ is the righteousness of the tree of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. The righteousness that would qualify us of um, um, qualify us to be in God's presence is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So let us not be deceived. He says he did this. Jesus did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in him. So we're justified by the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How awesome is that? I, 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 how awesome is that? That I don't have to perform. I don't have to try to be a good person. Remember everything I need to do. Work really hard. All I need to do is receive Jesus into my heart. And surrender. And say take over my life. Thank you for the cross. Take over my life. I surrender to your Lordship. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. The Bible says we're created for good works. In Christ Jesus. It has, God wants us to do good works. He wants us to walk in love, be kind, uh, reach out to the helpless, the homeless, the sick. But it's in Christ Jesus. So there's a difference. There's the one where you're going, doing it in your strength. That's of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And there's the one where there's Jesus that died on the tree for us. We do good works because his spirit, he lives on our inside. His spirit is doing the good works through us. That's the righteousness that pleases God. Those are the good works that will please God. Those are the good works that will please God. The good works that come as a fruit of the righteousness of God in us. Where we're able to love people and reach out and be a blessing and, and live holy and live godly and live responsibly because of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Because of Jesus on our inside. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So we don't attain perfection. We can't, we can't be good out, outside of Christ. That, is, that goodness is the goodness that is an enemy of, of God. We don't want to boast in that. We don't want to glory in that. We'll, we we, we want to be, we, we wanna, if we're going to boast, we're going to boast in Christ. We're going to boast because Jesus, the great one, the one who died for our sins, lives on our inside. And we're going to live our right. We're going to live righteously because of him. Because of his spirit on our inside. We're going to live righteously because of him. We're going to live godly. We're going to live holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. And if you're that one. I mean if, if, this, if the Lord has spoke, shown you something. Which is the purpose of this message. If the Lord, the Holy Spirit is convicting you in any way, let's go ahead and just pray. If you've leaned on your righteousness, either you've been a Christian and and um, you know and and you and you, you you think it's bad. Now, if you're a Christian, let me say this real quick. If you're a Christian, we live. That's a huge, huge step. 
and God accepts our good works. As long as, as our, and God accepts our, our good works when we rest in him and we're producing that fruit. Okay? So your fruit pleases God. But at the same time, at, at the same time, um, if you're if you are not a Christian, this message is for you. This message is for you, it's for all of us because we're strengthened by the word of God. But also if you're not a Christian, and, and, and I know that by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. I want to challenge you now that begin to just say, you know what? I thought wrong. I, I, I believed wrong. And today, Lord, I come before you humbly and I want to lay down everything I ever thought about myself and my good nature. And I thought my ways would save you because it would not. It was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And without Christ, the destination is hell and damnation. And so let's go ahead and just pray. Father God, I just thank you for an awesome time. I thank you for bringing forth this word, that your name may be glorified in it. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for my brother and sister that is coming with a heart of surrender right now in your presence. Lord, I thank you as they surrender to you. They say they acknowledge their sins and they acknowledge that they can attain salvation by their works or in their strength only through you. Lord, I thank you that right now you're receiving them into your kingdom as they surrender to you. And they say, forgive me, Lord, for all my sins and going my own way. I'm thinking it's by my strength. Lord, I just pray for your mercy and grace to touch them right now. Receive them onto yourself. Fill them, Lord, with all of you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, oh God. And give them the grace to live holy and blameless before you. To run this race. To produce good works, good fruit. Because they are abiding in you. And Lord, I also pray for my brother and sister who's known you. That every day we will die daily to ourselves. And that we will live surrender to you. And know that even, even, in, even, even that we will not even in our minds think that we're doing good works by our strength. That we will not stray. Because the enemy, even when we're saved, the enemy likes to pull us away in our, in our thinking and in our attitude. That we will not begin to do, perform works. But we'll lean on you and lean on your Holy Spirit and know that whatever fruit we're producing is because we're, we're um, abiding in you. And our lives, our, li our lives and our soul and our spirit, every part of our being is lined up with you. And we're letting your fruit um, exude out of us. And we're loving because you've loved us. And we're giving because you've blessed us. And we're able to do right because of your righteousness on our inside. Bless everyone who's hearing, hearing this word right now. Bless them, oh God, and strengthen us in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank the Lord for his faithfulness. May the Lord bless you and keep you and perfect you and strengthen you each day. And may you grow in his grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining in with me on Claudia God's Nugget of Truth. May the Lord perfect you until I see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.